what I like about the Kingpin, especially the one that you're writing right now, is that he seems as though he is trying very hard to have rules yeah. in, in his way. And um, I think it's interesting, like you say that Kingpin is your, is your favorite villain. And I'm fascinated by that just because like we work together, I, I I know you. You are a man of many rules. Like yeah. you're, you're straight edge. You don't you don't drink. You don't smoke. Like this is true. it's so interesting to think like you coming at that character being you and writing him as someone who's trying to sort of create rules. Like what was your thought process in in writing him, especially going into now this current ongoing? I think Kingpin, in a lot of ways, I mean my my take on Kingpin is I think different than a lot of people's. Um, in some way because I, I, I love so much of the Kingpin stuff that came before, especially like the Frank Miller stuff and, and uh, Bendis and Maliev and Brubaker. All those, all those creators did an amazing job with him, but the, the thing that I really sort of wanted to explore in some ways is that Kingpin is in a lot of ways almost a hero. He's, he has all of the, <clears throat> the setup to be a classic Marvel hero. He's, brilliant and strong and different. Um, he had a, a rough childhood that, that helped shape him. Uh, he's from New York. He has a love of the city and a deep concern for it. He's passionate and driven. He, he's, he's Spider-Man, he's Peter Parker, he's you know Captain America, he's any of these characters. He's um, Daredevil, except his moral compass is just a little bit askew. And, and what does that mean for him? And, and where does that take him? But like, he doesn't want, you know, <clears throat> the kingpin of the 70s is at a time, you know, the kingpin that they were writing in the 70s and 80s was from a New York where there was, you know, people didn't know if the city was going to survive, like the city was falling apart. And he was a representing trying to clean it up by making himself in charge of all the crime. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea that it's like, well, he is fighting for a safer city, but he's fighting on a, a larger level. And, and Daredevil and Spider-Man are, are fighting on this very small hand-to-hand -hand level, and he is buying out crime bosses and, and killing people and, and hiring their people so that the average New Yorker isn't affected by, you know, a, a gang war on the streets and stuff like that. And um, it's self-serving, but, you know, there are other heroes who are self-serving. Iron Man is self-serving. Yeah. Like, he kills people, but Punisher yeah. kills people. Like, he's, but he's a real, I mean, like, we've talked about this before, but he is, I mean, ultimately, he's a he's a piece of, He's a pretty bad guy, and what I like about the yeah. art, and I don't know if this was a thing that, that you had thought of or where it happened in the process, but even when he's being nice, he's, he still always looks sinister. Like, oh, he yeah. just always looks evil. Yeah. Even when he's doing the nicest thing, he's still an evil-looking dude. Ben Torres, who draws the book, and Jordan Boyd, who colors it, um, do an amazing job because their kingpin is huge and monstrous. Yeah. And so there's a lot of, he just has a presence that we, we needed the characters to know that at any moment this could turn. It's yeah. like being in the room with a tiger. Like, it can be lying down, but at any moment, like, everything can go off the rails. And so, yeah, he is trying really hard to be sweet and, and, and nice. And, and that's sort of what the book is about, is, like, people's perceptions of him naturally, ver because of who he is and what he's done and, and how he looks, versus what he wants people's perceptions to be and how much he can control that. He's very publicly saying that he's trying to m make good and, and go, down, go down a good path. He, he, he wants to atone for his sins and um, he's looking for forgiveness from, from the general public and that's the plot of the book. But yes, I mean totally, the, there's a scene in, in one of the issues where um, he goes to a, a hospital that he gives money to. It's a, a children's hospital that he donates to. And he goes, and uh, Sarah, the, the sort of protagonist of the story, who's a reporter who's been hired to write his uh, biography with him, uh, she doesn't know what's real, and she can't figure out if he, where he's being honest and where he's not because she knows all the news reports, but she also like sees this man who's very nice and before her. And he goes to the ho she goes to the hospital to confront him, and he's going, and we have a scene where he goes, and he, he play, there's a playroom, and he goes in, and the kids know him, and the kids love him, yeah. and he's playing with them, and they're climbing on him, and he's playing with a Spider-Man toy while they climb on him, and he is, it's, I mean, it's what you said that Ben and Jordan do a great job of, he is monstrous with these yeah. kids, he is ten times their size easily, 
but he's trying not to be. He's trying to be unassuming. Yeah. And, and it, what's nice about that is that that happens, but it's immediately preceded by this much more complex emotional beat, which is that a child has died, yeah. and he's screaming at the doctor. And you know, he could like a tiger. Yeah. He could he like all yeah. of a sudden his jaw could unhinge. You don't know. Yeah. So it's interesting that like even when he does care, there is also this element. Yeah, yeah. He's he's always um, there's always something just beneath the surface of him. I mean, he's a He's a really remarkably complex character, um, in such a in such an amazing way. In in a way that I think is a real um, testament to to what Marvel does, because he's a, such a complex character. Because so many people came in and added elements. Like when you read the the original Kingpin, the Stan Lee stuff, it's uh, he's absurd and he's great and he's super yeah. fun, but he's very like one thing and everyone who's come along since has added something and now he is just this fascinating man who like you know loved his wife dearly had a son he really cared about and his son betrayed him and and where do all those things put him and and now uh you know for me I, i'm left with this character who's who's li who's had all these chances to live a good life and be good and just missed them and he's now trying to sort of put the rest of his life in order I get emotional about him because he's he's really tra he's a he's a classic tragic figure like he can't get out of the way of himself. Yeah. And that's and that's really fun to write and I hope people like reading it.